Thank you for inviting me to this uh, webinar uh, on organic heterogeneous material. I have the duty to present a little bit the policy background about organic heterogeneous material. Uh, first of all, I would like to, let's say, uh, share with you why policy matters. And as, as you can see, we have uh, a lot of different policies that can affect seed systems and also our diversified seed systems and, of course, organic heterogeneous material development. So we have uh, ABS, so access and benefit sharing, intellectual property rights, seed laws, but also uh, phytosanitary rules uh, and research policy. So we have a lot of policies that can, can affect the development of diversified seed systems. And uh, let me also share with you the idea that finally, after I would say 20 years of discussions and maybe also some fight, at the European level, we uh, realized that the approach that we used to have at, at the European level is not more realistic. So the idea that one size fits all. And it, it took a lot of time to change this idea in our policymakers. And until, let's say, the last 10 years, mostly, we have supported uniformity and formal seed systems through seed laws and intellectual property rights policies. And now we have to move to diversity and so to support also informal seed system and land races, population, of course, in the definition of population, I have also included organic heterogeneous material. So that's the challenge. And let me also start with some historical background. And that's for me one of the book that uh, was written some 20 years ago by Connie and McKinders and Nils Lugas that in some way opened up all the discussion about seed systems, diversified seed systems, and the, the idea of supporting also informal seed systems. So it, it, we were in the beginning of 2000. And then at the European level, we had two European projects that really set up the concept of population and that was the base for organic heterogeneous material. So I would like to remind you first Solibam, that was developed in 2010 until 2014. And we had many of you also partners in the project and then Diversifood, yeah? just to be aware of the historical background. And thanks to Solibam, uh, we got, uh, let's say, the interest of policymakers on uh, population. And also we got the idea that we were the need to change our seed laws in order to have space also for population developed through the European Research Project post Soliba. But still, despite all, all of this, you can find in the report of the Commission on Genetic Resources for Food and Agriculture in 2011 about seed systems, so strengthening seed systems, and you can find this report that we have to upgrade genetic base of traditional cultivars, still ensuring uniformity. So even in 2011, even at the front level, they were still talking about uniformity and not diversity. And then another uh, issue about policy. It takes usually a lot of time to change policy. So in many cases, we cannot wait, let's say our practices cannot wait until policy is set up on the framework. Uh, for example, in the case of conservation varieties, the first directive talking about dealing with conservation varieties was uh, released in uh, 1998, but then we spent almost 12 years for having, let's say, all the definition how to register and market conservation varieties. So changing policies, it's a very long, long process. And with conservation varieties, as you are aware, we had some derogation, so not official VOS testing, no VCO testing. So something we tried to open up a little bit our seed law system at the European level. It was the first derogation system for, let's say, more diversity within the system. And then after, uh, during the end of the process of conservation varieties, at the European level, we started to change all the seed marketing framework in uh, the process that was called better regulation. They started in 2008, and we participated also uh, with the project uh, uh, Solibam, and ended in 2015 with the rejection of the proposal by the Parliament. That's important to note because during uh, the 
this process of better regulation, the consortium that did all the report for the Commission also suggested almost 12 years ago already that we can imagine at the European level two different systems, the large commercial breeding companies and the smaller market of regional breeders and producers that could run side by side. So already 12 years ago, we were talking about this idea of two parallel uh, systems uh, at the European level for uh, seed laws and seed marketing rules. In the proposal, we had some uh, opening regarding niche market varieties, heterogeneous materials, and varieties with official recognized description. But then the only things that were, let's say, a little bit maintained in our discussion at the European level uh, were populations. So we had uh, the two derogation, commission derogation 2014-18 that uh, allowed the experimental marketing of some species. And, uh, and then uh, the other, let's say, topic that was maintained at the European level was organic heterogeneous material, but not more <laughs> within the seed marketing framework, but within the new organic regulation. So just to be aware, the idea of diversity was developed thanks to two different a parallel paths, I would say. So the situation now in Europe, we have conservation variety, conventional varieties, sorry, conservation varieties. We have heterogeneous ma materials, but after the ending of the experimental phase for population, we at this moment don't have any specific place for the population developed during the experimental phase. Huh? So they could be, uh, let's say, integrated as organic heterogeneous material, but this is not so clear in the different aspects. For example, in Italy, we are still using the derogation to market the population registered during the experimental phase, but we are not allowed to add new population. So then we have organic heterogeneous material. I think you are all aware about uh, what we are talking about. I would like just to uh, uh, put some emphasis on how to breed so we can have crossing. We can have also on farm management practice. So that's very new, that's very important. That should be defined some way because it's very general. And then we can have any other techniques used for breeding or production. So it's quite broad definition of organic heterogeneous materials. Um, so we have in this case a simple notification, no more registration, seed production, marketing. We have to follow phytosanitary rules, so uh, sellers must be registered as professional operators. And as you can see, as quality control, we have post control, as we have now in the case of vegetables. And what also is relevant that is with this new definition, you have the idea that organic heterogeneous material uh, is expected to change over time. So that's also a challenge. We have to see how we can define this change over time and uh, how we can manage this change over time regarding seed uh, certification or seed marketing. That's labeling, but I think you all are aware about labeling. The only thing I would like to stress is point 11. So you can see we can also have something that uh, doesn't feel the generation rate for uh, conventional seeds. Labeling, identity, also in this case, we have this idea of on farm management practices. So natural, but also farmers or human selection during the development of organic heterogeneous material, we have to consider also this. And then regarding policy, I think that you are all aware that we are in the ongoing seed reform process at the moment, and we uh, are waiting the proposal, legislative proposal of the commission that should be maybe published by the end of June. And then we uh, have the negotiation phase that could last uh, all 2024. Yeah? It's not likely that uh, we, will, we will be able to have a new uh, seed uh, legislation by the end of this parliament, that it's, uh, let's say, spring 2024. But we have to see. Yeah? In this case, uh, what is in, under discussion at the moment, as you can see here in yellow, is a new definition of conservation varieties. Maybe uh, conservation varieties, they will change the name and the idea, at least that was the commission that, uh, 
the proposal of the Commission during the meeting that we had in February. The idea is to include also new varieties developed through participatory plant breeding in this concept of conservation varieties. Then uh, they have already defined seed exchange among seed savers or for conservation purposes. Still not clear how to manage seed exchange among farmers. So that will be an issue. And uh, organic heterogeneous material uh, will be included in some way in the new uh, seed uh, marketing laws. And there is the idea also to, let's say, include population and so to have something, some diversified varieties, not only for organic farmers, but even for conventional farmers. And then still under discussion, this idea to have more uh, control uh, done by private companies under official uh, recognition or control by public authorities. So in yellow, you have the things that are uh, uh, on the table for the next negotiation. So always about policies, you see we have also policies that can create a vision, not only to define how to do something, and there are the common agricultural policy, the farm to fork, the biodiversity strategy, and then we have the target to reach 25% of organic agriculture, as you know, and then we have to develop varieties adapted to. So policies can also set vision that then we have to, let's say, to follow and to reach thanks to dedicated uh, activities. And according to me, and that's the, the, the position that we have uh, in Italy, uh, according to our experience as a in Rurali, we have two options to, let's say, reach uh, the target. Uh, so bringing back diversity to food system and breeding for marginal environments. And so the idea to, let's say, move from conservation to community agrobiodiversity management and to diversify the agricultural system, diversify the food system in order to diversify our diets for public health and nutrition, with this idea to make a link uh, between diversity in the field, diversity in the diet, and public health, as was mentioned in this newly book published by Biodiversity that is about biodiversity, food, and nutrition. So I almost at the end, so diversity population, they are relevant for organic systems, sustainability and resilience, but then could be also important for citizens, for health, nutrition. And also the idea to, let's say, have evolutionary processes still in place. So the challenge is to reinvent farming, bringing back diversity. And I don't want to enter into seed system, but I will share with you my presentation so you can have uh, this idea of seed system, you can look at this. Just to say that we define this new, uh, let's say, scheme under uh, the last diversified project. It's about diversified seed system, where you have at the same time informal, what used to call informal seed system on the left, formal seed system on the right. They should be hand in hand, mm -hmm. let's say, and supported both, yeah, by policies, yeah, that can affect both systems. And so, let me go to the end of my presentation and uh, we have let's say to develop new seed systems that are decentralized and farmer oriented with participatory plant breeding as a new way to develop varieties to do breeding for marginal environments and uh, so the challenge that we have because what we uh, let's say reach during the last 12 or 20 years at the european level is just the beginning yeah but we have to move from uniformity to diversity, and that's really a big challenge because we have to, let's say, uh, to change policies, breeding, the concept, the idea of quality, farming system, processing system. So we are, that's my point of view, just at the beginning. And uh, we have to create a new world, a new agricultural system based on diversity. That's our challenge. And organic heterogeneous material should be part of this challenge. Yeah. Thank you very much. I would like to leave three questions on the table that should be addressed during uh, the working groups. So the first one, uh, how to support the strength of the breeder user interaction? Yeah? How we can support this? Uh, that's still a challenge to me. And how to finance informal innovation? And uh, that's also part of the question uh, that we um, still uh, don't have solved. And then we have the 
third point that according to the idea of developing more and more organic heterogeneous material, how we can protect for misuse. Yeah? That's just three questions that we can develop. Thank you very much and uh, I'm your disposal for any question.